Philosophies Revived In a world that constantly buzzes with activity, the art of being alone often takes a back seat. Our lives are filled with the cacophony of the digital age, where we are perpetually connected, surrounded by a virtual entourage of friends, influencers, and trending topics. But what if we've been looking at solitude all wrong? What if, instead of fearing it, we should embrace it as a source of strength, personal growth, and inner peace? Welcome to a journey that delves into the minds of some of the greatest philosophers in history, those who saw solitude not as a condition to be cured, but as a state to be celebrated. 1. Friedrich Nietzsche, The Path of Greatness In the tumultuous landscape of 19th century philosophy, Friedrich Nietzsche emerges as a provocative and radical thinker, challenging conventional wisdom and inviting us to reconsider our perspective on solitude. Nietzsche's philosophy is a symphony of paradoxes, celebrating individuality, vitality, and creative self-affirmation, while critiquing traditional values and the herd morality that comes with them. Central to his philosophy is the concept of the path of greatness, a journey that requires courage and often necessitates periods of solitude. Nietzsche saw solitude not as a condition to be feared, but as an essential crucible for self-transformation. To him, the journey to self-ownership and greatness often leads through the territory of solitude. He believed that in solitude, one could confront the most profound questions of existence and muster the courage to become their authentic self. One of Nietzsche's most memorable quotes encapsulates his perspective. The individual has always had to struggle to keep from being overwhelmed by the tribe. If you try it, you will be lonely often and sometimes frightened, but no price is too high to pay for the privilege of owning yourself. Here, Nietzsche encourages us to embrace solitude as a path to self-ownership and, ultimately, greatness. In another insightful statement, Nietzsche distinguishes between loneliness and solitude. Loneliness is one thing, solitude, another. In his view, loneliness is a state of lack, a condition of missing others, while solitude is a state of fullness, a condition of being with oneself. It is in this state of solitude that one can cultivate the strength and independence necessary for the path of greatness. Nietzsche's philosophy serves as a reminder that solitude is not a mere void to be filled, but a space of potential and transformation. By embracing solitude, we can confront our innermost fears, question our existence, and ultimately become the architects of our authentic selves. Nietzsche's legacy invites us to view solitude as a cherished companion on the journey to self-discovery and self-affirmation. 2. Soren Kierkegaard, The Journey of Self-Discovery Traveling back to 19th century Denmark, we encounter Soren Kierkegaard, a philosopher often regarded as the father of existentialism. His philosophy delves deep into individual existence, subjectivity, and the personal journey of becoming a true self. Kierkegaard, in a unique way, celebrated the importance of solitude in this process. For Kierkegaard, solitude was not merely a state of being alone. It was an existential condition that facilitated self-exploration and self-understanding. He believed that in solitude, individuals could confront the existential anxieties and despair that often accompanied the path to self-discovery. Kierkegaard emphasized the significance of solitude as a sanctuary for self-exploration and self-understanding. In solitude, he believed one could choose their own way and assume responsibility for their existence, free from the noise and influence of the crowd. He famously wrote, the more one isolates oneself, the closer one comes to oneself. This statement underscores the idea that solitude is a path to self-realization, bringing individuals closer to their authentic selves. Kierkegaard challenged the notion that authentic existence could be found in the crowd, arguing that it was in solitude where individuals could genuinely relate to themselves. 
The crowd, in his view, symbolized inauthentic existence. The path to truth and self-discovery did not lie within the crowd, but in solitude, where one could choose their own way and become their true self. In Kierkegaard's philosophy, solitude is not a state of isolation or loneliness. It is a deliberate choice to engage with oneself in search of self-understanding and authenticity. He encourages us to embrace solitude as a space where we can confront our anxieties, grapple with existential despair, and ultimately find our true selves. Kierkegaard's legacy reminds us that the journey of self-discovery often begins in the quiet corners of solitude, where the most profound truths about our existence await us. 3. Henry David Thoreau, living deliberately at Walden Pond. In the heart of 19th century America, alongside the tranquil shores of Walden Pond, Henry David Thoreau invites us to explore the transformative power of solitude. Thoreau was not merely a philosopher. He was a practitioner of the philosophy of solitude, living it as he sought to transcend the noise of society and connect with the essentials of life. Thoreau's famous experiment at Walden Pond is a testament to the idea that solitude is not a passive state of being alone. It is an active engagement with one's thoughts and surroundings. In the serenity of his self-imposed isolation, he found a space for reflection, observation, contemplation, and creative expression. Thoreau's experience highlights the profound value of solitude as a means to engage deeply with one's thoughts and the natural world. One of Thoreau's most memorable declarations, I never found the companion that was so companionable as solitude, resonates with the idea that true companionship can be discovered not in the company of others, but in the intimacy of solitude. Thoreau cherished the idea of living deliberately, of extracting the marrow of life, and his solitude was a deliberate choice to engage with the essential truths of existence. Thoreau's experience at Walden Pond reinforces the concept that solitude can be a source of strength, clarity, and insight. His solitude was not passive. It was an active engagement with life's essential truths and an opportunity to reflect on his values, beliefs, and place in the world. Thoreau invites us to reconsider our relationship with solitude, to see it as a catalyst for self-exploration, a tool for self-transformation, and a gateway to a more authentic and intentional life. Thoreau's legacy encourages us to view solitude as a pathway to deliberate living and authentic self-discovery. It is a sanctuary where we can confront our innermost desires, engage with the mysteries of existence, and connect profoundly with our own thoughts. As we venture into the world of solitude, we must remember that it is not a state to be feared, but a space to be embraced, for within its quietude lies the potential for profound self-discovery and a more meaningful existence. 4. Viktor Frankl Finding Meaning in Solitude Amid the horrors of the 20th century, Viktor Frankl, an Austrian psychiatrist and Holocaust survivor, offers a profound perspective on solitude and its role in the search for meaning. Frankl's experience in Nazi concentration camps led to the development of logotherapy, a therapeutic approach that underscores the importance of finding purpose in life, even in the darkest of circumstances. In his memoir, Man's Search for Meaning, he intertwines his personal narrative with his therapeutic doctrine, illustrating the transformative power of solitude in the quest for meaning. Frankl's perspective on solitude is rooted in the belief that a sense of purpose is what gives life meaning. He proposed that individuals can discover meaning in life through three pathways, one of which is the attitude we take toward unavoidable suffering. This third pathway is where solitude comes into focus. In the isolation of the concentration camps, Frankl found that solitude could serve as a catalyst for introspection and self-discovery. Even in the most extreme forms of isolation, Frankl used solitude to reflect on his life, recall cherished memories, and mentally rehearse future conversations and reunions. These acts of mental defiance, performed in solitude, 
helped him maintain a sense of purpose and hope. His enduring statement, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way, underlines his belief that even in the most desperate solitude, individuals retain the capacity to choose their response and find meaning. Frankel's work reveals that solitude, even when imposed and painful, can be a space for introspection and personal growth. It is a time to reconnect with our innermost values, reaffirm our life's purpose, and strengthen our resolve. Frankel's life and teachings remind us that even in our loneliest moments, we hold within us the power to shape our destiny, find purpose, and navigate life with courage and resilience. Solitude, as seen through the lens of Viktor Frankl, is not merely a state of being alone. It is a crucible for self-transformation and a conduit for finding meaning. It is an opportunity to nurse our psychological wounds, heal our fragmented selves, and cultivate a healthier, more balanced psyche. In the darkest solitude, we can find the light of meaning, resilience, and the power to choose our own way. 5. Blaise Pascal – The Inability to Sit Quietly Journeying back to 17th century France, we encounter Blaise Pascal, a polymath who recognized a fundamental human challenge, the inability to sit quietly in a room alone. In this simple but profound statement, Pascal unveils the human tendency to avoid solitude and the implications of this avoidance on our lives. Pascal's insight is a reminder that our discomfort with being alone often leads to a constant need for diversion and distraction. We seek external stimulation and noise to evade confronting our thoughts and feelings. The consequences of this avoidance, as Pascal suggests, are far-reaching as it is the root of many human problems. The inability to sit quietly in solitude, according to Pascal, leads to chaos in our lives. It is out of this chaos that new perspectives and self-discovery can emerge, but it necessitates letting go of what we have and perhaps who we are to allow for this emergence. Pascal's perspective encourages us to view solitude not as an empty void to be filled, but as a space pregnant with potential, awaiting our embrace. In his reflection, all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Pascal invites us to confront our relationship with solitude. He suggests that if we can become comfortable with being alone, we can begin to address our inner conflicts and gain a clearer understanding of ourselves. Solitude is not merely the absence of company. It is a sanctuary where we can face our innermost fears, challenge our assumptions, and better understand our desires and motivations. Pascal's legacy serves as a reminder that solitude is not something to be avoided but embraced. It is a space for introspection, self-discovery, and self-improvement. In solitude, we can confront our fears, question our existence, and ultimately become the architects of our authentic selves. Pascal's wisdom invites us to view solitude as a cherished companion on the journey to self-discovery and self-affirmation. 6. Carl Jung, The Crucible of Self-Transformation Our journey into the psychological realm leads us to Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst known for founding analytical psychology. Jung's work, characterized by concepts like the collective unconscious, archetypes, and individuation, continues to shape our understanding of the human mind. Central to Jung's psychological framework is the concept of individuation, a process through which individuals develop into their unique inborn potential. It is a journey towards self-realization, a transformation that allows us to integrate our conscious and unconscious elements, achieving wholeness. In this transformative journey, solitude plays a crucial role Jung believed that solitude provides the necessary space for introspection and self-reflection, two essential elements in the process of individuation. In solitude, we can confront our shadow, the unconscious part of our personality, 
that we often deny or ignore. Jung's view on solitude and the shadow is particularly enlightening. The shadow represents the part of us that we fail to see or know. In the quietness of solitude, we can invite our shadow into consciousness, allowing it to emerge from the dark corners of our psyche and acknowledging its presence. This is no easy task. It requires courage, patience, and a willingness to face uncomfortable truths about ourselves. Jung believed that until we have made the unconscious conscious, it will direct our lives and we will call it fate. In solitude, we have the opportunity to engage with our unconscious, confront our shadow, and embark on the journey of individuation. Solitude is not merely a state of being alone. It is a gateway to self-discovery and self-acceptance. Jung's work also underscores the therapeutic potential of solitude. He referred to solitude as a fount of healing, a space where we can nurse our psychological wounds, heal our fragmented selves, and cultivate a healthier, more balanced psyche. Solitude, in Jung's perspective, is not just a state of being alone. It is an enriching space for introspection, self-discovery, and personal growth. Jung's legacy invites us to view solitude as a pathway to self-realization, a sanctuary for self-exploration and self-improvement. It is in solitude that we can confront our inner conflicts, embrace our vulnerabilities, and embark on the journey of individuation. In solitude, we find a space for self-healing, self-acceptance, and self-realization. 7. Jordan Peterson Bracing Solitude for Personal Growth In the contemporary landscape of psychology and philosophy, Jordan Peterson, a renowned Canadian psychologist and professor, offers profound insights into the importance of solitude. Peterson's ideas resonate with individuals seeking guidance in navigating the complexities of life, and he emphasizes the significance of solitude in personal growth. Peterson recognizes that spending time alone is crucial for fostering self-esteem, maintaining sanity, and developing psychological resilience. In a world filled with constant stimulation and noise, solitude provides a necessary space for introspection and self-reflection, allowing individuals to gain clarity about their values, beliefs, and personal goals. In his book, 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos, Peterson highlights the rule, set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world. This rule emphasizes the importance of addressing one's internal challenges before attempting to change external circumstances. To do this, one often requires solitude to confront their innermost struggles and find the strength to improve their lives. Peterson's ideas on embracing solitude are a contemporary call to view it as an opportunity for personal growth. He encourages individuals to spend time in contemplation, reading, and other solitary activities to gain insight into their lives and develop a better understanding of themselves. In the quiet of solitude, individuals can confront their internal chaos, find clarity, and ultimately set their lives in order. Peterson's perspective on solitude aligns with the timeless wisdom of philosophers who understood the transformative power of being alone. In the solitude of our thoughts, we can cultivate resilience, wisdom, and self-awareness. It is in these moments of quiet reflection that we have the potential to become better, more self-realized individuals. Solitude, as viewed through the lens of Jordan Peterson, is a gateway to personal growth, resilience, and wisdom. It is not a state to be feared or avoided, but embraced as a crucible for self-improvement and self-discovery. In solitude, we find the necessary space to address our inner turmoil, set our houses in order, and become more robust, meaningful contributors to the world. Peterson's insights affirm the enduring value of solitude in the ongoing journey of personal growth and self-improvement.